Hey guys, so a few days ago I was telling you guys about what I think makes the perfect truck gun, right? Uh, but I think what makes the perfect bug out rifle can, is, needs to be something pretty different. Um, though the rifle I'm about to show you could double as a truck gun in the right configuration. Uh, what my choice for this to be for, uh, for a bug out rifle is something that's easy to resupply in the field, uh, parts are plentiful, in a worst case scenario, shit hits the fan in a crazy level, like, like I'm talking about complete civil unrest and, you know, dead police, dead soldiers everywhere. You know, it's, it's gone well past day 90. It's, it's to a point that's completely unpredictably ridiculous. And for that, I think the only real choice is this right here, a mil spec M4 ish carbine. And I say ish, it's not a true M4 carbine, it's not select fire, and there's not, not really a whole lot of value in a civilian having a select fire in a bug out situation where ammo um, is limited. But the reason I chose this rifle is not just because it's lightweight, it is, not because it's extremely reliable, but it is. Um, but because in that scenario where the world goes to hell, these guys will be everywhere. Yes, you can get P mags, which are better, or you can get the, um, the H and K style, uh, Mariner mags that are, that are made out of steel and they'll last a little longer and whatnot. I mean, I've got a Magpul follower with some Wolf Springs in here, so it'll last a little longer, have better feeding, but still it can be crushed and destroyed fairly easily. Um, this rifle you can see is pretty plain Jane. I have an optic on it and I actually would not recommend the EOTech for this kind of scenario. I like this optic because I've got the model here, the 552. I've got a lot of these batteries, and I've got a lot of the rechargeable versions of, the same, of these batteries, so I can keep this going with my solar recharger, like, indefinitely. But if I could instantly turn this into the cash I spent on it when I initially bought it, I would take that money and buy an, an aim point, purely because of the battery life. Although, to be honest, I like this reticle a lot better. If, uh, if L3 could make an EOTech that, could, that had the same kind of battery life as an aim point, they would, they would have the market, like, in hours, at least as far as I'm concerned. It is in, in terms of irons, I've got a mil spec uh, BUIS here that co witnesses with the EOTech, and I'll show you. Rifle clear. So I'm going to aim it at the camera, and you can see yeah, it does co witness fine. And uh, what's, what's really nice about this setup in general is um, if something happens to the EOTech, right? Say it catches a bullet or some such, um, even, with, even though this model here doesn't have the quick detach lever installed, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you basically can just, if you can see your front sight through it, you can use your, your backup rear sight. As far as a flip up front sight, I think it's wasteful. Uh, in a bug out situation, I want something that's, that keeps it really simple. You know, the whole kiss, keep it simple, stupid. You don't want anything that if dropped on will break. And I know the M4 front sight carry handle, or front sight carry handle, front sight um, post slash, um, slash, slash gas block is really, really heavy duty, really well built. It won't, it won't survive a deuce and a half being rolled over top of it. Um, well, it might actually depending on the angle, but for the most part, it probably cause some irreparable damage. Um, but aside from that, it'd be good to go. The only thing that I would add to this, and I've got a single point sling attachment installed back here. Um, I had to take the front sling attachment off to install this slimline Magpul forearm, and I think that's a bit of a mistake on Magpul's part to make it so that's, that's required. I understand why it's that way. So I think this rifle would benefit from having another sling attachment point for when shooters just want to sling it over their shoulder and, and hike it around. Um, for more immediate action, this rear single point sling attachment works really well. Um, I think another good thing about the M4 that's collapsible stock is if you need to give it to one of your fellow survivors, and for some reason, let's say that your, uh, your, your bunker mate, if you will, is Danny DeVito and you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, aside from being a, a hilariously dark parody of the movie Twins, it's also, it shows that you can adjust this stock to fit either person, and that's important. I mean, it's fully extended. This SL line is, uh, it's way too big for me. I can't, that's as far forward as I can get my, my head comfortably, and so I'm not anywhere close to where I like to be. I mean, I like to have this almost fully collapsed nose on charging handle so I can get right up on it, and when it's that small, it's a lot more compact, a lot easier to maneuver. Um, I've got a flash hider on there right now, a Vortex-style flash hider. I think it's a good choice for the... Uh, for the apocalypse, so to speak, so you can hide your position if you need to shoot at groups of individuals who are, you know, raiding and pillaging, or if you need to defend your your family from a bunch of would-be assailants. It's it's better they have no idea where the rounds came from. At least they have less of a of a better idea. Um, I would say, in an 
apocalyptic scenario, a suppressor is a much better choice, uh, not just for concealing your position, but for uh, maintaining your, your ability to hear any potential threats. Um, I would I would recommend against having a railed forearm on this weapon. I think it's needlessly heavy, and uh, ounces are pounds, pounds are pain sort of thing. And when you're hiking this thing over God knows how many hundreds or thousands of miles, and you're dehydrated and you're hungry, it's going to suck if it weighs too much. So I think this is a, this is a pretty damn good setup. Like, the other thing I would change on it, um, I would probably want to install an ambidextrous selector switch. Um, I've got an M16 bolt carrier in here. Um, obviously not the, not the fire control system and not the, um, the bolt itself. Uh, actually, there's no difference between a bolt and an M16 and an AR, but you know what I mean. Um, but the reason I did, this, did that is so that if in that scenario were to occur, if I pick up someone else's lower and toss it, um, or toss my upper on it, I can use a select fire lower. Um, that, and I know that these BCM M16 bolts are a lot more heavy duty. Um, yes, the carbine action is more violent than the, uh, than the full length rifle, but I feel like it, it more widely, like I said before, fits a, a wider variety of, of shooters. Uh, on top of that, this, uh, this has, a, has a heavier barrel. I think that's not necessarily the best choice. I think uh, the old GI bar barrels, the, uh, the pencil barrels, make a really, really good uh, choice for guys like myself who aren't going to be doing Alamo-style last stand. So I don't need to have my groups stay tight after a 600-round group or 600-round you know, battle or whatnot. I, what's more important to me is being able to get in, get out quickly, and engage any targets that, uh, that could appear. Um, I've got a little thing here, a little rail attachment, uh, one of the M-lock attachments for, for a flashlight, and uh, I think that's, that could be pretty useful, but um, keeping a flashlight fed in the, uh, in the, towards the end of the world could be a bit tricky, so if you get one, you should try to get one that you either have rechargeable batteries for, and those batteries themselves have a solar charger for, or you should just learn to forgo the use of them, which is where I think a sound suppressor comes in very well, because it doubles not just as a sound suppressor, but also as a flash suppressor. And to some extent, a compensator, as it releases the gases more slowly and adds weight further from the barrel. The problem with that being it adds unnecessary length. So an NFA restricted type M4 would be really nice, like an SBR with a suppressor. So maybe it's the, maybe it ends right here at, you know, 10 inches, 10 and a half inches and has an additional four inches or, or, or uh, six inches of suppressor. But then you've got something that's running a lot hotter and it's running a lot dirtier. So it kind of rules that out as well. Uh, the only thing I would change on this is maybe a more robust backup rear sight because this is a um, this is actually a um, pretty well loved <laughs> example, and uh, you can see it's uh, the spring tension is not really where it should be. It's it gets it gets back up to where it needs to be, but it just barely gets there. So I'd, I'd want something a little little a uh, little less dependent on spring pressure, more dependent on like a locking setup. Either that or one of those fixed A2 style rear sights. Those are pretty useful. Um, but yeah, I think this is a, this is a pretty badass setup. Um, I like that it's small. I mean, I've got small hands and I can thumb over bore if I need to. So I think it'll fit like a, a, a very wide variety of shooters. Um, but yeah, tell me what you guys think. What do you guys have uh, in mind for your end of the world rifle? I mean, I, I think this one makes a really badass like long term end of the world sort of thing. If it's more of a shit hits the fan and I need to get out quickly and I need a gun that's going to run for the 300 rounds or so of ammunition I'm carrying with me, grab an AK um, for the most part. I mean, hell, a Mosin Nagant would still work pretty decent in that scenario. Um, not as well in close quarters, obviously, because you're you know, racking the, the bolt every single round. Um, but yeah, I mean, hell, even, even an M1 carbine actually would make a pretty decent survival rifle, um, provided you had enough ammunition for it and it's kept in working order, that gun has very little recoil, weighs very, very little, but long term, finding 30 carbine ammo and uh, M1 carbine magazines, it will, if it were the 1970s, that would be a sick choice for a bug out rifle, seeing that it, it's, you know, definitely not the 1970s, this guy right here. Um, but does that mean I think the Beretta M9 is the perfect bug out handgun? I don't know. Maybe that'll be tomorrow's video. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, send me send me pictures of what you guys have for your uh, get out of dodge rifle, your uh, ultimate 
bug out slash shit hit the fan rifle and uh yeah or, or do a video response or, or whatever man just want to want to see what you guys have going on we can compare and contrast pretty badass thanks guys don't forget to like comment subscribe and uh you can forgo the photos this time because uh one of you guys did deliver and uh, i was just joking but uh thanks anyway appreciate it thanks guys see you around